For this video, what I want to do is show you how to find the remaining trig functions when you are given one trig function in either the quadrant that it is located in or the sign of another trig function. This is a really important process in a trigonometry class, so let's get started. All right, so the first one that we have is we are given that sine of theta is equal to the square root of five divided by seven, given that theta is in quadrant two. So anytime you're working with these kind of problems, the first thing I advise doing is just draw a rough sketch. Okay, so a couple things to keep in mind when you are drawing this sketch, um, that we do order it counterclockwise. So this is quadrant one, quadrant two, three, and four. And then just remember that in this quadrant here, that cosine and sine are both positive. In the second quadrant, cosine is negative, sine is positive. In quadrant three, we have both of them are negative. And then in quadrant four, our cosine is positive and our sine is negative. Okay, so those are helpful for when you're solving these types of problems, knowing what your signs look like. So let's get started. What we have is that the square root of five and seven. So remember that sine, if you just remember Sokotoa to help you out, and sine is always opposite over hypotenuse. So we are given the opposite and we are given the hypotenuse. And when we set up our um, right triangle, our reference angle is always going to be formed by the X axis and um, the hypotenuse. So this is going to be our hypotenuse, this would be our opposite, and then our adjacent would be down here. So we are given that the opposite side is the square root of 5, and we are given that the hypotenuse is 7. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to find our x coordinate here. Okay, so we could call it our x because if you think about it, in um, with ordered pairs that this would be our x and this would be our y value and then seven would be our radius or our hypotenuse so we would just use pythagorean theorem to help us find that so we would say x squared plus the square root of five squared equals seven squared and when we simplify this we end up with x squared plus five equals 49 Bringing this to the other side, we can say that x squared equals 44. And then when we take the square root of this, we do have to simplify the radical. We are going to leave these as exact values rather than doing decimal approximations. It's better to work with exact values, so it just helps to keep it that way. Um, remember that 44 breaks down into 4 times 11. And so we end up with 2 square root of 11 as our side over here. Okay, so now we have all of the information that we need in order to find the five remaining trig functions. Okay, so I'm going to start with the ones that we are most familiar with, cosine and tangent, because we already have sine. So cosine, remember, is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So when you do the adjacent, that's the side next to, but not the hypotenuse. So we would just do 2 square root of 11 over seven, and we don't have any radicals in the denominator, so we don't have to do anything else. The one thing that I did forget to write down is that because cosine is in quadrant two, it does need to be negative. So this should be negative two squared 11 over seven. Okay, it's important to make sure that you know what your signs are. So like I said, this is positive, positive. This one is negative, positive, negative, negative, and positive, negative. So make sure that you pay attention to your signs. All right, so the next one is tangent of theta. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. So the opposite side is the square root of 5 over the adjacent side, which is negative 2 square root of 11. So this is an acceptable answer, but most of the time in math, we cannot have radicals in the denominator. So do we do have to rationalize the denominator for this one. To do that, we would just multiply by whatever's underneath the radical. So in this case, we would multiply by square root of 11 over square root of 11. We're essentially just multiplying by one. We're using the multiplicative identity. Okay, five times 11 would give us the square root of 55. And then Whenever you take a radical times itself, you end up with what's inside. So in the denominator, I would have negative 2 times 11. 
So our final answer for tangent of theta would be the square root of 55 over negative 22. So that would be our second answer. All right, so moving on, the next thing that we want to look at is our reciprocal functions. So remember that our reciprocal of sine is cosecant. So cosecant theta, remember that it is the reciprocal of sine, so all we have to do is flip square root of 5 over 7, so we would end up with 7 over square root of 5. And again, we would have to rationalize the denominator because we're not allowed to keep that in there. So when we do that, we end up with 7 square root 5 over 5, and this would be our final answer for cosecant. Okay, we have two more that we need to discuss. Our next one would be secant of theta, and secant, remember, is the reciprocal of cosine. So for this one, we would have to flip this as 7 over negative 2 square root of 11. Again, we have to rationalize the denominator, so I would multiply both the top and the bottom by square root of 11. So when I do that, I get 7 square root 11. Remember, we already talked about that this would be negative 2 times 11 here, so we would end up with negative 22 in the denominator. Okay, and then our last one is tangent. I'm running out of room. I didn't quite save myself enough room. So for not tangent, cotangent, the reciprocal of tangent, remember, is cotangent. So cotangent of theta, what I would do is find the reciprocal of the original one rather than this just because of the fact that you're going to, this is more complicated to simplify. Okay, so we would do the negative 2 square root 11 over the square root of 5. And then to rationalize the denominator, we would multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the square root of 5. So our final answer would be negative 2 square root 55 over 5. All right, so I know that was kind of sloppy. So our remaining trig functions are cosine is negative 2 square root 11 over 7. Tangent ends up giving us square root 55 over negative 22. Cosecant is 7 square root 5 over 5. And secant is 7 square root 11 over negative 22. And cotangent negative 2 square root 55 over 5. Make sure that you do simplify any radicals. So if you do have any perfect squares in there, they do have to be simplified. So what I want you to do now is try one on your own. Given the information that secant is negative 7 and that sine is less than 0, if you feel comfortable trying it on your own, go ahead and pause the video, try it, and then continue watching once you have tried it. Okay, so I'm going to assume that you did stop the video and try it, but in case you didn't, I'm going to go over the answer anyway just to make sure you understand the process. Okay, so if you remember that it's always cosine comma sine when we're talking about our ordered pairs. Okay, and so we want to know where sine is negative. So sine, since our y coordinate, we would have a negative value for y here, and we would have a negative value for sine in quadrant four. Okay, um, since we are given secant this time and not cosine, remember that secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So that means cosine theta is equal to 1 over negative 7. So this is telling us that cosine is negative. And so the quadrant that we would want to go to where they're both negative would be quadrant 3. So this time we would form our triangle down here in quadrant 3. Okay. So remember cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So this is telling us that our adjacent side is going to be negative 1. And our hypotenuse is going to be positive 7. Okay, so we do need to find our y coordinate. We need to find sine. Um, on the last one, we had to find our x coordinate because we were given sine. So on this one, we do have to find our y coordinate here. Okay, so to find that, we would again use our Pythagorean theorem negative 1 squared plus y squared equals 7 squared. So when we do this, this would become positive 1. 
equals 49, so y squared equals 48, and we do have to remember that when we simplify this, we cannot leave it as the square root of 48. The largest perfect square that goes into here is 16, so this is really 16 times 3, and the square root of 16 gives us 4 square root 3. So do make sure that you simplify it. Remember, since that we are in quadrant 3, this would be negative 4 square root 3. Okay, so now we have enough information to find our remaining trig functions. We already have secant and we have cosine. We were given secant and we have cosine. So we need to find sine of theta, we need to find tangent, cotangent, and we need to find cosecant. So let's start with sine. Remember that sine is going to be our opposite over our hypotenuse. So we would just end up with negative four square root three over seven. Okay, our next one that I'm going to find, and it really doesn't matter what you find next, because I found sine, I'm going to find cosecant next, just because it's the reciprocal function, so all I have to do is flip this one. So I would have negative 7 over 4 square root 3. I do have to rationalize the denominator on this one, so remember to rationalize the denominator. All you have to do is multiply both the numerator and denominator by the radical. So we would end up with negative seven square root of three over four times three. And I could have done the math there. I just want you to make sure you understand where the value came from. So cosecant of theta is going to equal negative seven square root three over 12. All right, the last two that we have to find are tangent and cotangent. So let's start with tangent. Remember that tangent is the opposite, so negative four square root three over the adjacent, which is negative one. So if I simplify this, our tangent would just be four square root three. Remember that both tangent and cotangent are going to be positive in quadrant three. Um, tangent and cotangent are always positive in one and three. Um, because a negative divided by a negative is a positive. And then our last one is cotangent. Cotangent theta is just going to be the reciprocal. So because of the fact that I do have a negative divided by a negative, it would just be one over four square root three. We do have to rationalize the denominator. So I would multiply both the numerator and denominator by the square root of three. And when I do that, I end up with this square root three over 12. So just like before, when we had to do the 4 times 3, we end up with square root 3 over 12. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics you need me to cover, please let me know that as well.